latest third generation Mini is fast becoming an icon. And the convertible version adds even more desirability to this British built premium car. And the British can't get enough of these cars with the UK being the biggest market in the world for the soft top version. So, can this new model still cut it in the style stakes and as a fun car, does it meet up to expectations? Why don't we take a look? The Mini Convertible has been the biggest selling open top car in the UK for the last five years and it has been a big hit all around the world. So Mini's parent BMW required a careful evolution of the design rather than risking any major changes. This little car might be getting bigger with every new generation but it's also getting better to the extent that it now actually feels like a downsized BMW. In Mini Cooper convertible form the aim is to give us a car with youthful style and driving pleasure just like the Mini Hatchback but with the added fun of top-down motoring. And I figured testing this great little car here in Switzerland when the sun is shining and the roads are tarmac perfection could only highlight the Mini's many talents. Retro character has always been the Mini's selling point and that uniquely chic and funky Mini presence is clearly on show inside and out. It's no big surprise to find that the car's dimensions have increased. It's an inevitability brought about by ongoing safety regulations, in particular greater crash protection and the desire to improve interior space. Despite the increase in size, the Mini designers have been successful in keeping that small car look. The design retains an essentially retro appearance, including that unique Mini grille, the round lights, the many neat details and that short round rear end. And while some may say the Mini is beginning to look a bit cartoon like, to my eyes this latest evolution looks both familiar and attractive. An early impression I'm getting here is that this newest Mini feels more luxurious than ever. It's remarkably quiet and refined in the cabin with little road or wind noise to ruin the ambience. And the car's increased dimensions I mean it's more spacious too. This upmarket cabin offers plenty of appealing touches like the giant round information unit which displays the latest generation sat nav, multimedia choices, ambient lighting controls and numerous vehicle setup options. Switches and controls are all premium in appearance and in feel. Built into the base of the gear stick sits a small lever with which you can quickly change the car's driving setup. Eco mode gives a slightly dull thing to feel. Standard is a bit more engaging, while sport mode is the more lively option in which max go-kart feel is proclaimed on the main display. I might add that this car is way too refined to feel anything like a go-kart. The Mini has never had a big boot, or should I say trunk, at 215 litres, this convertibles is slightly bigger than the previous model, although this reduces to just 150 litres with the roof down. So you'll have very limited space for bags if you decide to have the roof down on your summer vacation. There are always the folding rear seats, however, which provide extra space if you don't have any passengers back there. If you do attempt to stow a large suitcase, it's possible to enlarge the size of the boot by opening and operating two side levers and raising the base of the hood while you load up. It's a small but welcome feature. While some rivals favour a folding hardtop, Mini has stuck with an electrically operated fabric roof and it has the advantages of lowering and raising quickly and it can be partially opened giving you a sunroof only option. With the roof up and at sensible speeds, there is virtually no significant wind noise. So, what is this Cooper like to drive? 
overall chassis setup is aimed at being user-friendly. Either cruise about in standard or eco mode in calm, quiet comfort, or switch to sport mode to instantly tune up that sharp, accurate steering, get much better gear changing, and a faster throttle response. The brisk, if not particularly powerful engine, plus that sport mode, gives a lively driving experience while the car always feels predictable and safe. When driven enthusiastically, road holding is tenacious, brakes are strongly reassuring, and the overall impression is, well, it's fun, as intended. Our car here, of course, is the entry-level Mini Cooper and has 134 brake horsepower from a 1.5 litre three-cylinder engine. You can specify your Mini to be hotter if you go for the Cooper S, which has a two litre four-cylinder engine with 189 brake horsepower. The John Cooper Works version bumps that same engine up to 228 brake horsepower, making it one of the fastest super minis around. The Cooper D is the only diesel model and its three cylinder 1.5 litre unit has 115 brake horsepower. So, should you buy one? Well, it's fairly expensive. And then there's that temptation of many personalization options to bump up the price, including a Union Jack roof, special paint, leather trim, and numerous special packs. But there aren't many rivals that offer open top thrills in a super mini sized package. Certainly not as funky and chic as the mini, and not with this degree of quality and refinement. So, for enjoying your great little super mini in the fresh air, and for taking brisk drives on great roads in one of the world's most iconic of small cars, well, take my advice and go and take a good long look at the Mini Cooper convertible.